Today I'm going to be talking about Embedded Near Field Communication, or NFC, Made Easy. Uh, my name is Chris Nelson. I'm with NXP Semiconductors. Uh, I'm an application engineer actually based uh, right here in San Jose, a few miles away in our, our San Jose office. Uh, I'm supporting our contactless reader ICs, including our, uh, our NFC ICs. Um, I'm supporting kind of all aspects of our customers uh, designing in our ICs, so uh, hardware, antenna, tuning, antenna design, and also firmware and, and software. Um, so the, the content of my talk today, a uh, short introduction to NXP, in case uh, perhaps you're not too familiar with, with NXP as a company. Uh, introduction to RFID and NFC. Uh, what are the benefits of NFC? What can embedding NFC into your device do for you? And then I'm going to uh, actually discuss our actual solutions, showing you some of these boards and uh, do some demos for you. So a short introduction to NXP. Uh, we are a global semiconductor company, uh, offices all over the world, uh, based in, in Europe. Um, but we do have a large office here in San Jose. Um, so. Uh, we had a, uh, over $4 billion revenue last year and more than 25,000 employees currently. Uh, I'm actually in what's called an identification uh, business unit. Um, so we're split up into several different units and product lines. And at, uh, our microcontroller uh, products are actually in what's called computing. So today I'm going to be talking about products from both identification and also from computing. So micros and also our NFC reader ICs. Uh, before talking about NFC, I wanted to bring up uh, radio frequency identification in general, RFID, um, because NFC kind of builds on the existing RFID that was already out there. So in, uh, in passive RFID, uh, typically you have some kind of host system communicating with uh, your reader. Reader is typically made up of uh, some kind of host controller, and then the RF front end with an antenna, and then there's a tag on the other end. Uh, with a, a loop antenna as well. Uh, the, the RF field generated by the reader actually powers the tag, so there's no battery inside the, the tag. And then you can actually exchange data both ways. And you can have multiple tags in the field as well. This is just a picture showing one tag. Um, how does that power transfer work in concept? You can think of it as a, uh, a transformer, if you remember your electromagnetics. Um, you can think of the, so basically, this is an example of one of our reader boards. Uh, there's a two-turn loop antenna on the, the perimeter of this, this board. So that can be modeled just as an inductor. And then on the tag side, there's also a, a several-turn antenna, uh, also modeled as an inductor. So you can think of it as just an uh, air transformer, um, where the reader is basically the primary uh, coil, the tag is a secondary coil. So the, uh, the reader generates an alternating, mag uh, excuse me, alternating current through the inductor. You get uh, lines of flux flowing. Um, and those lines of flux have to go through the, uh, the tag coil. And the tag actually harvests its, uh, its power from the induced voltage from that. So the, the reader uh, generates the RF field, transmits power and data to the tag. Um, and the tag actually responds basically by switching a, a load in parallel with its, in, with its coil. Uh, this load presents a variable load to the reader, int the reader coil, and it's a very small change in the, the RF field that can be detected by the, the reader receiver. And that's how the tag actually responds back by switching a load. It's and they call that uh, a load modulation scheme. That's how the tag answers. So this is just traditional RFID. Um, I wanted to bring up a little more RFID history before getting into NFC. Uh, there are three kind of main RFID technologies, and actually NXP is involved in all of them. I'm actually just focused on the NFC portion, uh, but we do have uh, 125 kilohertz low frequency LF RFID, uh, historical RFID technology uh, that NXP is also involved in. Um, just compare, I'm going to compare the three different technologies. Uh, typically, uh, RFID, uh, 125 kilohertz RFID, if you have a really large uh, reader antenna, you can get up to maybe 1.2 meters of, of read range. Um, it works well in harsh environments, so, 
both on uh, on fluids. So it's very popular on animal bodies where there's fluid fluid uh, inside the body. So it's popular in tracking cattle, and it's also uh, can work pretty well in somewhat metallic environments. Um, one issue with 125 is the transponders or the tags tend to be pretty expensive because you typically need a lot of turns on your tag and that increases the cost, a lot of turns on the antenna. Uh, but the readers can be made very cheaply uh, at 125. And NXP reader and tag solutions at 125 are, are, are high tag line. Um, and then where I'm focused is actually on 13.56 megahertz at high frequency HF band. Um, here, the read range, depending on which technology you're using, there's a few different uh, international standards at 13.56. Um, I don't really have time to get into all the details of the different standards, uh, 13.56 standards, but just remember there's a standard called ISO 14443, and that has parts A and B. Um, and so our MyFair and our NTAG tags, which some of you received some NTAG tags, um, those are following the type A uh, standard. Uh, but there's another 1356 standard called ISO 15693, and that's uh, our I code line. So, depending on which technology you use, um, the read maximum read range will vary. Typically, with MyFair and NTAG, following type A uh, standard, you can only get up to 10 centimeters of range, so it's quite a close, uh, close technology. Whereas with I code, if you have a very large, again, a very large reader antenna, um, you can get up to 1.5 meters. Uh, they again, they also work uh, quite well in harsh environments. Um, the transponder cost is t uh, typically less than 125 kilohertz tags, uh, but the reader cost can be uh, sometimes a bit more than 125. And here we have a few different lines. We have our MyFair tags and readers um, following the Type A uh, standard. We also have NTAG, which are NFC tags, um, and some of you received those also following Type A. And then we have iCode following 15693. And this is, uh, this is the, where I'm focused. And we also have, uh, when people think RFID, they typically think UHF. Um, that's uh, you know, between 840 and 960 megahertz UHF band. Um, this is where you know, we're tagging a whole bunch of items for inventory, for example. So thousands of items and trying to read them. Um, so you can get very large read ranges at UHF, 10 meters or more. Uh, one issue with UHF, it is susceptible to fluids and, and metal more than the other frequencies. And the goal of UHF tags typically is to be in the low sense range. Since you're going to be tagging millions of items, you want really cheap tags. So they're, they're cheaper tags than the other uh, frequency bands, but the readers can be quite expensive uh, to work at UHF and be able to read all the different technologies excuse me, to read all the, the tags in the field at the same time. And this is our, our U-code uh, tags that we have at UHF. So it's just an introduction to RFID. Now, how does NFC fit into this picture? Um, so RFID, as we spoke about, encompasses uh, all of these various frequencies and technologies. And NFC is basically, um, incorporates a subset of them. So it's uh, just, NFC is only at 13.56 megahertz, and it's uh, backwards compatible with all the existing readers and tags that were already out there. Um, and then on top of that, NFC Forum added a couple additional modes. So they added what's called peer-to-peer -peer mode. I'll talk more about that. And also card emulation. So this is how NFC fits in with the traditional RFID landscape. So if you're talking about NFC tags, they work exactly the same as uh, RFID tags, um, but with some additional modes if you have a full NFC device. So now getting into actual NFC history. Um, so it has been around since 2002, invented by, it was actually Philips back then, NXP spun off of Philips. It was invented by NXP and Sony in 2002. Uh, then the NFC forum was established uh, by NXP, Sony, and Nokia in 2004. Uh, first commercial rollouts in the phones in Europe in 2006. And then uh, NFC uh, interest kept growing. Uh, NFC forum membership increased to over 150 members 2008 from various areas of the ecosystem. 2011, uh, you started seeing a lot of Android phones um, incorporating NFC, so NFC was actually open sourced into Android. 
last year, um, the NFC APIs shipped with the Windows 8, and this year is still ongoing, so we'll have to see what, what happens this year, still growing more and more. Uh, so what is actually NFC? Um, we talk, I talked about this uh, somewhat already. It's uh, basically a short range, so up to 10 centimeter contactless communication at 13.56 megahertz. Um, so they call it an intentional communication, so a touch. So for example, if, if you're walking by and there's, for example, a tag stuck up on this wall here, you're not gonna be able to communicate uh, that distance. You got, so they want you to actually have to take your phone or your device out of your pocket and tap it. Um, so they call it a touch intentional technology. Um, it is standardized in ISO standard 18092. And as I mentioned, it is fully compatible with all the existing 13.56 megahertz region tags that were already out there. But the uh, NFC did add some additional modes on top. As I mentioned, uh, they added a card mode inside. So they bas we basically took a reader mode and a card IC and put them into the uh, a single package IC to support both modes. And there's also a way for two NFC devices to communicate over peer-to-peer device-to-device -peer, uh, connectivity. Uh, and the data exchange rate is up to 424 kilobits per second. So it's definitely not the fastest uh, exchange rate if you compare it to Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Uh, so it's typically used to exchange small amounts of data. So for example, um, if you're talking about 100 kilobytes uh, data exchange, that will take at least two seconds at this data rate. So if you get much higher than that, you don't want your users necessarily standing there for, for a long time exchanging data. So. It's designed for small amounts of data. Um, I wanted to bring up NFC Forum. So you can go on nfcforum.org. Uh, it's an important aspect of NFC. It's a global special interest group, nonprofit, uh, established for a few different reasons. Um, one is to advance the industry adoption of NFC into various uh, use cases. And also, a big goal of NFC was to achieve global. Uh, interoperability no matter where you went in the world. So historically with the RFID there was proprietary technologies all over the world. For example, um, type A and type B was big in Europe. Uh, Felica was big in Japan. So it was difficult to take whatever tag you had or whatever reader you had to various countries and have them work. So NFC is a global standard trying to basically be designed wherever you go in the world your tag and, and your NFC devices will be able to communicate with one another. And also make sure they're uh, focusing on the future roadmap for NFC developments. And there's now more than 180 member companies in the NFC forum that are just growing daily. Uh, one other important, a important aspect of NFC is they defined a common uh, data format for storing your data. And they call this the NFC Data Exchange Format, or NDEF. Maybe you've heard of NDEF. Um, so the goal was, if you have an end of message, any NFC device out there will be able to, to recognize that message. So no more proprietary kind of data storage, unless you want to go proprietary, of course. Um, so it's a common data exchange format. Uh, you have your end of message. You can actually have multiple records in the same message. And each, uh, each record has a header where you kind of define what kind of uh, record is this. So there's various predefined types. Uh, for example, there, you can have a URL as a record, you can have a text, you can have a, a, a SMS text message, a phone number, uh, various messages stored in one NDEF message. And it basically tells you how to store this data in an in a NDEF format. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about uh, a lot today is the embedded reader. Um, this is just a block diagram, just introducing an embedded reader, what, what it generally looks like. Um, we'll be focusing on our LPC microcontrollers and our contactless reader ICs as well. So this is the RF front end, um, mainly controlled by this host, Micro. Um, then you have your loop antenna, and you need some matching components external to match your transmitter to the whatever antenna you install on your device. Uh, there's typically, not always, but there's typically some kind of back-end host that it's also communicating with. And power and then you can you know, communicate with phones or cards uh, from your antenna. So I'm focusing on the, the LPC and the contactless reader IC today. A little more detail on the NSC tag as well. So the NSC tag, uh, NXP only makes the actual tag IC. 
uh, this is a small IC here. And then our customers will take that IC and mount it onto uh, an antenna. It's just typically a few traces, a few turns of uh, metal traces. And then they put that on some kind of plastic inlay. And that's uh, what becomes your NFC tag. And it's basically uh, typically just some EEPROM memory inside of that IC where you can read and write uh, various data. And potentially you can add security on top uh, if you like as well uh, into your, your NFC tag. I mentioned briefly um, NFC modes. So NFC Forum defined three main NFC modes. Um, the first one is what's called NFC Reader Writer. And this is the mode that's fully backwards compatible with uh, all the existing 13.5.6 RFID tags and readers that were already out there. So this is your traditional, um, so for example, I have a Galaxy Nexus phone here uh, that has NFC inside. If I just unlock my screen, if I just take a, a passive tag, or this is a MyFair Ultralight tag, just tap it, uh, and I can just read the data off and display whatever data is on this tag uh, with my NFC phone. So this is, that's what, uh, when you know, I do that, that's a reader-writer mode that the phone's in. Um, then they also define what's called peer-to-peer, -peer, um, and that's where you have actually data exchange between two NFC devices. So maybe you guys have seen those, um, those Samsung commercials showing the, tapping the phones back, excuse me, back to back. I can just show you that. So I have actually a Galaxy S3 and a Galaxy Nexus here. So you just tap them back to back with, for example, if you have a, a website open, just tap them and I can share the website from one to the other. Um, and that's what they did, uh, they're showing in those Samsung commercials. That's just an example of uh, peer to peer data exchange between two NFC devices. And then there's also um, card emulation mode. Um, so card emulation was driven more by the payment industry. So they wanted your phone to be, or your tablet to be able to emulate a payment card. And basically, because there were already a lot of contactless credit cards out there. So they wanted the phone to be able to look exactly like a contactless credit card. And when you tap your phone, for example, on a point of sale reader, uh, the point of sale reader can read you as if you're just a standard card. Um, and so that was another mode that the NFC forum added in. So these are the three main NFC modes, and typically the, the phones will support all these, these three modes. Um, so getting in kind of to some of the, uh, the use cases, um, NFC has been growing a lot in the past few years. Um, I believe in 2012, around 150 million uh, phones and tab tablets shipped with NFC enabled. Just, these are just a few examples of those. So some, some phones from Samsung, HTC, um, various Motorola, various other uh, phone manufacturers. So now that all these phones are out there, um, now what, what, what the great thing about that is the phone manufacturers have invested a few dollars to put NFC inside. So we can start embedding NFC also on our side to communicate with these phones and take advantage of the fact that there is NFC inside. Um, so uh, next I'm going to show you three use cases um, that kind of show the kind of the main benefits of NFC uh, and, and what can embedding NFC in your device uh, actually do for you and you can communicate with all these millions of phones that are already out there. Um, the first one I want to talk about is a Bluetooth pairing example. So one big benefit of NFC is it can really simplify interactions uh, if someone has an NFC phone. Uh, for example, uh, this is a NFC phone and a Bluetooth headset. Um, so in the past, it was a bit of a complicated pairing process. Uh, you might have to hold, a, hold down a power button, for example, browse your phone to the Bluetooth menu, uh, find the, the identifier of the Bluetooth, and then type in some kind of pin. Um, and now, uh, the way NFC is set up is you have, basically, when you tap your phone, you have an instant connection. It's less than 100 milliseconds setup time, so much faster than a Bluetooth uh, connection setup. So you can, uh, for example, you have a Bluetooth headset or a Bluetooth speaker, if you embed NFC inside of that, uh, you tap your NFC phone, you instantly read out the Bluetooth pairing information and the NDEF message, and the phone will instantly try to start pairing to that, uh, that Bluetooth. Um, 
So that's just one example. It can also apply for Wi-Fi pairing. So if you have a router, you put NFC inside your router, someone taps their phone or NFC device, they can instantly pair to the Wi-Fi. Um, and anything else you can think of where you need some kind of uh, pairing. So NFC can help simplify your interactions. Um, another nice use case is there's a, a global e-metering company called Landis and Gurr. And in 2011, they announced they were working with us on uh, putting NFC into their e-meters. Um, so the, the nice thing here is this was formerly, the e-meter was formerly just a disconnected device, battery powered. It actually didn't have a way to access any backend host. Um, and so since there's all these millions of NFC phones out there already, what you can do is if you add just embed NFC into your, your device, so your e-meter or whatever device you have, you instantly add uh, a, basically a cloud. So you can communicate over NFC to the phone, and the phone can then go over the air and communicate back with the back-end server, uh, back-end cloud. Um, so kind of the, the use cases they were focused on were uh, maintenance and prepayment. So maintenance meaning if they want to do a firmware update to their e-meter, um, they can first send the, the firmware update down over the air to your phone. Then you can basically just tap your phone onto the NFC enabled e-meter and do a firmware update uh, on the e-meter. And you can also just gather maintenance data. Uh, you can gather data information about your energy usage and prepayment as well. In some countries, um, you have to prepay for your, your energy usage. So you can prepay online. That can be sent over the air to your NFC phone, tap your phone, and you've just paid for your energy usage for the month, for example. So just imagine any you know, disconnected device you have. Um, you can basically add a cloud to it by just putting NFC inside. And then you can use the phone, NFC, all the millions of NFC phones out there to go over the air. And the third uh, use case I wanted to bring up, NFC can also help make your daily tasks easier. Um, we're seeing growth of NFC in the medical space. So this is an example of uh, on the left is a glucose meter, on the right is an insulin pump for someone who's diabetic. Uh, they were, these were you know, typically just disconnected devices, battery powered. Um, and you know, every day, I don't know how often you have to take your glucose reading. Uh, maybe you have to manually read it out, type it in perhaps to your insulin pump, uh, et cetera. So it's easy to make mistake, forget something. So now if you have a, you, you embed NFC in the meter, if you tap every time you take your measurement, just tap your phone, that can instantly be sent up to the cloud to some backend server. Maybe your doctor can uh, immediately see that data. Um, and just as well, you could embed NFC in the insulin pump and then, for example, tap the glucose meter on the insulin pump and instantly set your, your insulin, uh, optimum insulin amount. So it can be helpful in daily tasks, um, both adding a backend cloud and just helping you to remember to do whatever you need to do for the day. Uh, those were the three kind of benefits I wanted to focus on. Um, so coming back now to what does NXP actually have to offer you in terms of uh, hardware, um, getting a little bit more into that. So when some people see NFC, they get a little uh, scared because they think, uh, oh man, I have to support all these different modes, all these different protocols. Um, but uh, I just wanted to bring up that the nice thing about NFC is typically the, the phones out there, they're going to support everything. So they're going to support Reader Writer for all the, the different NFC tag types that I, I mentioned briefly. Uh, they're going to support peer-to-peer -peer in all modes. And typically, they're also going to support card emulation. That's, card emulation is not always inside, but typically, they're also going to support card emulation. Um, so the nice thing about that is that means on your embedded reader side, you don't have to support everything yourself. You can just choose one mode, one protocol that you want to use that best fits your application. And I actually recommend uh, doing the minimum that you can on your side to keep your code as small as possible. Because you keep adding more and more protocols on top, your code's going to get larger. So pick whatever mode works best with your application and, and uh, whatever you're trying to do on the embedded reader side. Um, I just want to show, so there's various types of tags. Typically, the phones are going to support all of these. So type A, type B, which is following 14443, A and B. Uh, there's also type F, which is Felica, another tag type. Uh, so the phones are going to be trying to read all these various tags. And then in peer-to-peer, -peer, 
Um, there's a few, a uh, couple other modes as well. There's an initiator, a target, and it's actually active and passive mode. Um, I didn't think I had enough time to get into all the details of this. I just wanted to bring it up. But the phones are going to be supporting all of these. And then optionally, they might also support emulating uh, various tag types as well, it's A, B, or Felica. Um, so here's an example, uh, just to reiterate that point. What is the phone actually doing? Um, so for example, my, um, my Galaxy Nexus, actually when the screen's off, you're gonna notice there's, uh, NFC's not enabled. And I think that was more for security reasons, so someone can't just come by and try to read something off of your phone. Uh, so you actually have to unlock your phone, then they start actually enabling NFC and polling through the various modes. So once you unlock your screen, um, this is just an example, it's not exactly what the phone does, but it's typically going to go into reader writer mode and pull for any type A tags that are out there. Uh, then it's going to stay in reader writer mode and pull for type B tags. Uh, then pops, possibly pull for type F tags. Then pull for uh, 15693 tags. And it's just going to go, you know, go through every single mode and protocol. It's going to go into peer-to-peer, -peer, see if there's any peer-to-peer -peer target out there to communicate with. If it doesn't see anything, it's going to go switch to peer-to-peer -peer target, see if there's an initiator. And then, for example, it might try to emulate a type A tag or type B tag, seeing if there's anything on the other side that's reading it. So this, um, this is this called the polling loop. So it's, it's going through all these modes, and then typically there's also a, a sleep time. So I can just show you on my, on my Galaxy Nexus, um, when it goes into reader writer mode, this is just a little field detector LED. So it, um, basically a tag antenna with the LED installed. So the, in the presence of an RF field, you'll see that the LED lights up. So you can see every time the LED lights up, it's polling for tags. So it's just basically polling, uh, sleeping for about a second, I think, and then just going through every mode over and over. And uh, so that's how the polling loop works on the phone side. So that means on your embedded reader or NFC side, you can choose whatever of these modes fits your, your application. So for example, if you're doing a point of sale reader, uh, typically point of sale reader is just, we're trying to read contactless credit cards. And so the phone, uh, when the phone starts emulating a type A or type B tag, that's when you would start communicating with the, with the phone. So you can just focus on supporting these two modes and basically reading, you're just in standard reader writer mode on your side and trying to read the phone when it's emulating a type A or a type B tag. And so you can exchange data bi-directionally there. Um, and then there's also, of course, if you just have a standard passive tag or you can also have your NFC device in a card emulation mode on your side, um, you can just focus maybe on uh, only emulating type A. Um, you don't have to support everything here if you don't want to. So the reader, if you're emulating a type A or if you have an N tag, it's just going to communicate uh, in type A reader writer mode with the phone. Or the, uh, the glucose meter example that we talked about, uh, perhaps you want to do some kind of peer-to-peer -peer ex peer -peer exchange between your NFC device and the phone. Maybe you're just going to do peer-to-peer -peer target. So you just go into peer-to-peer -peer target mode and you talk to the phone at when it's in the initiator, initiator mode and exchange data that way and you can just ignore all the other modes if that's all you want to do. Um, so now that uh, we've learned about a little bit about NFC, I wanted to focus on what does NXP offer uh, in this space. So coming back to this slide, just going to be focusing on the LPC and the contactless reader IC components uh, of this. So we have two what we call blue boards that I'm going to um, at least demo at least one of them for you. Um, the parts installed on these blue boards on the top is called CLRC663. Um, some people are confused where these names come from. That actually came from Contactless Reader IC Model 663. And on the bottom I have uh, what's called PN512 blue board and that comes actually from Philips NFC512. Um, so two kind of, depending on which use case you're going for, you can choose uh, either board. They're both focused on embedded NFC. Um, maybe I'll just explain briefly the difference between the two parts. Um, so 663 is a, a higher power RF. So it, uh, the transmitter uh, 
power supply can go up to 5 volts on 663 and up to 200 milliamps transmit current. So that's why we actually put a quite a bit larger antenna here because the more RF power you have, you can uh, dr basically drive a larger antenna. And the larger antenna you have, the more read range you can typically get uh, on tags and, and phones. Um, PN512, the main difference between 512 and 663, it is a lower power IC. It can only go up to 3.3 volts and 100 milliamps driver. So we put a smaller antenna. And it can also support uh, the card emulation mode. So if you do want to emulate a card, you're going to want to look at the PN512. 663 does not support the card emulation mode. It only supports reader writer and peer-to-peer. -peer. So it kind of depends uh, what you're looking to do in your application and which board you choose. Uh, and you can see, so 512 also supports reader writer and peer-to-peer. -peer, but we, we kind of put what looks sort of like a tag antenna. If you do want to do card emulation, you typically have to have an antenna on your uh, NFC device that looks like a standard tag antenna. Um, and the, the interfaces to these boards are both the same to the ICs. You can choose if you want to use I2C, SPI, or UART uh, from your host. And um, now I'll just give you a little bit more details on what you can do with these boards. So they're designed to connect up directly Perhaps you're familiar with our LPC Expresso boards and our LPC Expresso uh, development environment. Um, so they plug right into our, uh, this is an LPC Expresso board here. It plugs directly in. So full support for the LPC Expresso environment. And we have a bunch of software examples for the LPC micros to communicating to the 663 and PN512 NFC devices on our website. I'll actually show you the website. Um, it's already pre-tuned with optimal antenna performance, so you can you don't have to worry about tuning it immediately. Um, and it's a good kit if you're just starting off with NFC because you can get up, get up and running in a, a few minutes, basically. A little bit of detail on this board. Um, this is the the connection to plug in the LPC Expresso board. This is the antenna, the two-turn antenna. Uh, the traces are actually on the bottom side here. That's the actual chip. It's a HVQFN32 package. And then we have the antenna matching components uh, between the IC and the antenna. A very similar design on the 512 blue board, just a smaller antenna. So LPC Expresso connection, antenna, four turns. Um, the PN512 is installed right there. And then the antenna matching as well. So how do you get started? Basically download LPC Expresso IDE, which is uh, freely available. Um, this is uh, what it looks like. Uh, here, when you import our code examples, you'll see the, the source code displayed here. We've released the full source code in C. Um, and then the debug information can be printed out here in the, in the, council, the council area. So you just really need this, your laptop, USB cable uh, to power the board and communicate with the, the debug interface, LPC Expresso board, and one of the, the blue boards to get started. Uh, one other point I wanted to make, some people when they see these boards they freak out because they're, they're quite large. Um, so they, this does have a lot of extra components on it. So for example, this whole section here is just the debug interface. So in the final product you don't need any of this. Um, you basically just need the LPC micro here, crystal, and then you need the, the blue board components, but there's also extra components on the blue board for debugging purposes. So we do have one uh, small board just showing how small your, potentially how small your NFC design can get. Uh, this is a different IC called PN533. It actually has a built-in USB interface. So in this case, you just need one chip, crystal, uh, the match, a few match, small matching components, and then a small antenna. Um, the, the issue is if your antenna is this small, you won't get much read range uh, with such a small antenna, maybe only two or three centimeters. Um, so I wanted to actually show you where can you find this uh, information and these boards and software. So you can find it on our website. Click on identification and security, which is where BUID parts uh, are located. And then you can see here various uh, parts. You're going to find the NFC ICs under reader ICs. And then you click on reader ICs and you see there's NFC devices displayed, contact, uh, smart card readers, contact lists. And you see there's a demo board tab here. Just click on that demo board tab. And these are 
I only focused on two of these boards, and those were the 663 blue board here, and also the PN512 blue board here, but we do have other demo boards uh, if you're for other use cases. So I'll just show you the PN512 information. Click on the 512. It wants me to sign up for something. So this is the PN512 blue board uh, homepage, a little picture here, description. Click on documentation tab. Um, so we have here a quick start guide for getting the board up and running quickly. Um, our software examples come with, uh, I didn't have time to talk about our library, but it comes with our NXP reader library. Um, and there is an app note on if you need to reduce the flash size, how to scale down that library. And then we just have a bunch of uh, firmware examples that um, for various LPC Expresso boards. Um, and here they're focused on uh, LPC 1227, uh, which is a Cortex M0 128K flash. And we also have for 1115, which is also M0 with 64K flash. Um, so we're reading various MyFair tags, um, Desfire, MyFair Classic, Ultralight, and then of course we have peer-to-peer uh, -peer example, and also card emulation example is, is right here. So that's where you can find it. If you want to actually purchase the boards, I think I can show you that as well. Uh, there's a quick ordering uh, down here. So you can view the stock in our distributors and just click here and buy the board immediately and start playing with it. Um, and now I wanted to show you a quick demo. So this is LPC Expresso I reinstalled on my machine. I have the 663 blue board plugged in already uh, to an LPC 1114, which is a Cortex M0 with 32K flash. And I'm using two cables here. Um, you could actually reduce it to one cable if you just change the jumper. But for now, this is powering the LPC board and exchanging the debug information. And this one's just powering the, the bottom board. Um, so I have it plugged in. I already pre-built this, I believe. So I already imported what's called RC663 polling project. What this project does, it's just a reader-writer mode project. It basically goes in and starts pulling for all of the various tag types that I spoke about. So it's going to pull for type A tags, type B, Felica, which is type F, and also 15693 tags. So I'll just click debug. And in theory, I built this already. So now it's just going to download the, the hex file to the LPC Expresso board. And you can start debugging. So it's downloading. And it, uh, by default, it's, it's going to stop on the, the first line of the main, so you can start um, you know, setting your breakpoints and whatever, stepping through. Uh, so I can just show you that. So now I think it's, it's running. So I'm using I2C. That's what it ships as default. Uh, I squared C between the LPC and the 663. Um, and you can see it's saying no card or tag detected. So that's just a debug information getting printed out uh, over USB. But you can see this isn't like the phone. It's actually just on all the time, just polling uh, for tags in succession, basically. Um, so I'll just show you what happens if you tap. Um, so with this large antenna, uh, you can get close to the maximum NFC read range around 10 centimeters. So you'll see when I bring in this ultralight tag, I'm reading it around right there. So it's around 10 centimeters. Um, so this is a, a MyFair ultralight. It has 64 bytes of memory. So it's a, one of our smallest uh, EEPROM memories. Um, also, you know, you can read whatever tag. There's a, actually a MyFair tag in here, uh, which I thought was cool. So this is a MyFair classic. Uh, inside of your your badges, um, we sorry, <laughs> we use uh, MyFair Classic for our building access, so you can uh, you know read the MyFair Classic here. Uh, and I also have a few other tag types on this sheet. So for example, I have a iCode iCode tag. So you'll see that's a it's displayed as 15693. And if I had Felica and 
test fire and various other tags, I could, I could read those as well. So, yeah, these boards are just a nice way to get started with NFC, reader, writer. Uh, if I wanted to show peer to peer, I'd have to load the peer to peer project. Um, and I wanted to just show you physically this is the 512 board. Uh, I'm plugging in the LPC on the bottom side, and it's the same concept. And then I in case you guys are using Linux, embedded Linux, for example, we do have an interface board to connect onto a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Raspberry Pi, but it's uh, embedded Linux. So, and we do have some software as well for, for that. Um, so, okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks for coming.